Squid, part two. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Tim, I am the Dizzy Daddy, and welcome to part two of our Squid series. It's not really a series, it's just two videos that just wouldn't fit onto one, so it's not really a series, but anyways. Yeah. So in today's video, I'm going to be making a Japanese favorite that is a bit of an acquired taste. It looks weird, it tastes kind of weird to people who aren't used to it, but it is one of my all-time favorites. So this one is a little bit more for curiosity's sake. I think most people would be a little bit shy about trying this one, but if you're feeling adventurous, please go ahead and try it out. Once you get the taste for it, there's nothing quite like it. So, today's dish is called shio kara, which basically just means that it's gonna be preserved in salt. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna take him apart, and we're gonna take the guts, or rather, the liver, sort of digestive gland area of the animal, and we're going to use that, a copious amount of salt, maybe a little bit of sake, and we're just going to basically make a sort of squid preserve. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer here, this is a raw dish, so people who are a little bit nervous about stuff like that, you might want to skip this one. Now, I have a very specific squid here today. It's called a surume ika. Now, this dish is made from time to time with other types of squid. This is pretty much the most common one that they use because the size of the liver relative to the squid is pretty large in this one. And that's what you need. You need the guts and a lot of it to make this dish. So that's why this particular squid is used. Surumeika. So today we're gonna take this guy apart. We're going to pull the guts out, salt everything, pack it up, and make one of my favorite side dishes to eat with rice. Okay, let's go. So in the previous squid video that I made, I did this as well. So when I used my scissors last time to detach this ligament here, I kind of made a mistake and stabbed the liver part. So this time I'm just going to use the tip of a knife here, make an incision, and then... Okay, so once you've cut that ligament, you kind of reach in and kind of just loosen everything up here and you might even get part of that quill there or the boat or the bone whatever you want to call it and you just pull and okay that one came out nice and clean so you can see the liver here okay that's the part we're going to use the ink sac is over here so we're just going to separate all that. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut this here, and cut this end off of here. And then you can actually just, with your fingers, nope, usually you can. And with your fingers, you can usually just remove this ink sac. Try not to bust it, because once it gets everywhere, it's just a pain. It's really messy. Okay, so there's the ink sac. We're not going to use that today. So, I'm going to toss that. And here is that liver. As you can see, it got a little bit ruptured, but that's okay, because we're going to... We're basically going to cut them open anyways. So, we're going to put the livers in there. I wanted as much of the guts as possible. It's always good to have more guts. The more guts, the merrier for this. Or liver. I should probably just stop saying guts. And we're just going to liberally salt this. You know what? I'm not even going to use the sprinkle side. I'm going to just dump a bunch on here. Like so. Okay, so that's about half a tablespoon. And just going to mix that up. 
We're going to let that sit for just a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to push it through a sieve and just get all the creamy bits of the liver there. But we're going to let that sit in the salt, maybe a little more. Okay, we're going to let that sit in the salt for a good uh, 30 minutes. You could even leave this overnight, but uh, I never do. I'm always in a hurry. So now what we have left is the body and we've got the legs here. So what we're going to do is you can't eat the eyes of these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to locate right below the eyes and cut it right there. And this beak here, I want to remove that too if that's still hanging around. That's all hard, you don't want that. And this part in here is actually good to eat. It's kind of like cartilage, but you can definitely eat that. You just want to get rid of these eyeballs. You don't really want the eyeballs, so you can't eat the eyes. So get rid of the eyes. We'll keep the cartilage. And I still have the legs from our grilled squid. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the legs and first what we're going to do is remove what's called the tumet or the nails. And on the end of some of these larger suckers here, you have something that, I don't know if you can see that, but basically it's like a little fingernail basically of the squid. It comes off like a tiny little ring there and you don't want that. that, that you can't bite through that, that's kind of, it's just, it won't hurt you or anything, but it's just unpleasant in the mouth. So, what we're going to do is, you could take your knife and scrape it and whatnot, but that can get kind of messy. So, I'm just going to put these in a bowl of water and just kind of give them a good kind of like scrubbing with my fingers, and we'll remove them that way. And, just give that... Just give that a nice rub, okay? And you just want to get the tentacles in your hands there and rub each of the sort of the suckers and those fingernails, so to speak, of the squid should come right off. Okay, that's good to go. Put that to the side and let's move on. In the other video, the grilled squid, I went through this as well, but we'll do it again. Basically, we're just going to pull out anything that's left in there, including these things here, which are the gills. And we're also going to get whatever's left of the quill, the bone, the boat, whatever people call it. Now, we're going to cut this into strips. So, I'm going to give it a quick rinse, and I'll show you how to do that. So got our squid body here. We're going to turn it around so that these guys here, the ears, are kind of face down. I'm just going to cut along here and open it up. Okay, and you don't want to cut all the way through. Just kind of open this guy up. You can open it up like this and then you remove whatever else is in there. Just to make sure you get it all, you can take a paper towel and that'll just give you a bit more grip. And just pull whatever thin membranes and basically anything you can get off of there, just pull it right off. Now we're going to flip this around and we're going to sort of take our finger and kind of pull on the ears here and just kind of pull this part right off. So we're just going to pull that right off you see some of the skin comes with it. Now we're going to want to peel this. You're going to kind of find an edge. So, there's a corner right here and you'll see it come up a bit. Then, you can pull this like this and you just basically start peeling it. And if you have trouble, just take your paper towel and if you need to start from another edge. 
Okay, so that is done. And we're just gonna peel this as well. I'm just gonna cut it down the center here. And then same sort of thing, you just kind of find a spot that'll start to peel for you. And then you peel it back. And for these ear parts, just get as much of it off as you can. Okay, so our squid body is all peeled and separated. We've got the legs here. And if you want, I, I suppose you could peel off some of the skin on the legs. The way my mom did it, she just didn't bother. I think it was just too much of a pain, really. But, uh, yeah, it's not really going to interfere with your eating enjoyment, so you can just leave that on there. And then we're going to cut this up. So a little bit of cartilage still here. Just gonna cut that part off. I'll keep this little nub. One, two, yeah, let's go like that. So cut one, two, and then cut these into strips. And we will also cut up the ears the same way. And then we'll separate the legs. So what I like to do is kind of cut this and kind of cut this nubby thing up a little bit and these for the most part are good to go I think okay moving on now we're gonna take those livers and the guts that we sprinkled with salt and let it sit for, uh, oh, these have been sitting around for uh, maybe closer to an hour. I'm gonna put that in here. I've got a wooden spoon, and I'm just gonna mash that. I'm just gonna mash it, and get it out of its skin, basically. Try to get as much of it out as you can. I'm gonna go to the bottom here and scrape all that off. Since we're using sake anyways, I'm just gonna rinse and get as much out of it as we possibly can. And again, this looks pretty gruesome to anyone who's not used to it, but it's on its way to being a fantastic side dish. So what we got left in here is the guts and of course the sake that I used to loosen up the guts out of the sieve. And we'll add our squid now. Got my bowl of guts, got my bowl of cut up squid, and put that in there and give this a mix around. Now the sake is already in there, but I'm going to add just a little more. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of sea salt. So we got all that salt in there. This is a very salty side dish. You're gonna be eating very small amounts of it with rice. So this is not something that you just take a whole forkful and shove in your mouth. Okay, and I am just going to taste it. For saltiness. Woo! Yup. That's the taste. The salt, the booze, but most importantly, the viscera or the innards. This liver here, that's what makes it. Okay, so that has to sit for about 24 hours to really let the salt penetrate. And then you can eat it, as long as you keep it in the fridge, you can eat it for about Oh, I'd say a week, no longer. Remember, this is a raw dish. Um, seafood nowadays is flash frozen on the boat, so it is fairly fresh. 
But like with all raw dishes, you are taking on a little bit of risk when you eat something like this. So, if it makes you nervous, give this one a pass. Okay, let's bottle it up. So, we are going to put that in the fridge and let it sit for 24 hours. Then, you can eat it with some nice, fresh, steamed rice. But, we should try at least one, just to make sure the flavor's okay. Okay, let's give this a try. Now, as I said, this hasn't sat long enough at all. I just put it in there. But for now, let's just make sure the flavor's on point. Mmm. Mmm. That was an earpiece. Nice and crunchy. Oh yeah. Yeah. That is the stuff. Once again, this video is more for curiosity's sake. Um, I don't think a lot of you are going to want to try this because it is quite exotic, but for those of you who are feeling adventurous, give it a go if you can find some surumeika. We're usually in the frozen section in an Asian supermarket is where you'll find them. Okay. You can throw those in the fridge till they're ready to go. There we go. Surumeika shiokara. It's not exactly for the faint of heart. It's more of an interest piece more than anything this video. But it is delicious once you get the taste for it. It is something that a lot of Japanese people do love. It's also something that a lot of Japanese people do not love. People are split on this, just like natto. But I, for one, do really love it. So there we go. That's the second in the squid series. Maybe we'll come back, do other types of squid. But for today, as always, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to check out my fitness journey, please do. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Take care.